Hi guys. Um, today's sermon is called The Other Rainbow Connection. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you've done and what you're about to do. Fill us, drench us with your life and love. And ultimately, we all come from you, Father. Teach us. Just speak to us. Um, something different all at the same time. Enhance us with your word. Enhance us with your life. Enhance us with your love. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey guys. Um, I was thinking um, about a sermon that I did years and years ago called What is the Rainbow Connection? And um, I was thinking about it and I and God dropped in my spirit for the past few weeks the song The Rainbow Connection. Um, in that sermon I talked about the world obsession with the supernaturals, with angels and with demons and with all of that. And what we're really looking for is not a rainbow connection, but we're looking for a God connection. And I said that, and I said that when God created the world, he wanted man to be um, in communication with himself, in communion with himself. So that's what we've been looking for from the beginning of time. We've been looking for a way to get back to God's original intention for us after the fall. And that original intention intention is to be in communion with him and I was and I was in my bed and the Lord said I need you to talk about um, the other rainbow connection which is like a part two um, so that's what I'm gonna do so so this sermon is is going to be called the other rainbow connection. Um, funnel, funnily enough, I was talking with um, two people this morning, and um, I said, "Why is it?" When I say I'm Canadian, uh, they say people, when people ask me where I'm from, and I say I'm from Canada, um, people say, well, where are your parents from? I said, well, they're, my mom's from Jamaica and my dad's from St. Kitts. And they say, oh, I said, yeah, they're from the Caribbean, and that seems to satisfy them. And the person was saying, well, we, well, the reason why they asked that is because they want to know where, where you come from, what's your background. Yeah, and I understand that too, and I'm very proud that my parents, um, to be descended from the Caribbean and we have a very rich culture, especially Caribbean cuisine. Uh, Jamaican food is the best. Curry goat, curry beef, oh, as they, oh, just everything. Jamaican food is awesome. Rice and peas, ackee and saltfish, all of that is the best. But I began to think as I sat here on my computer this morning, 
why isn't me being Canadian enough? What is, like, it just, and it kind of stunned me a bit. I'm like, why isn't that enough? If I were a Caucasian person and I said I was Canadian, people just kind of accept that. They don't say, oh, where are your parents from? It's almost like being Canadian is not enough. You've got to be from somewhere else. Um, and as I said, I'm very p- proud of my background. I'm very proud of where I descend from. I'm very pr- proud of that culture. We have a rich culture and a rich history. But we as Canadians, also to have a rich culture and a rich history is just so hidden and so mired in other people's history. It doesn't seem like enough that we have to big it up more. Because when I see, when I see um, the Americans talk about how proud they are to be American, and they should be. Everybody from the U.S. out there, be proud to be American, most definitely. Um, but But I think Canadian culture is lacking the pride to be Canadian that we are we we have we have pride to be from wherever we're from we if we're lgbt we have pride to 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 do that or if we're um asian from if our parents are from being asian we're proud to do that if our parents are from caribbean we're, we're proud to be that, but it just seems to be like, if we're Canadian, it seems like we're not proud to be that. And, and it's disturbing to me as an Afro-Caribbean uh, Canadian, it's very just disturbing to me. We should be proud to be Canadian. We have a very rich history in this country, not just the Native Indians, ha, um, what, what people have discovered in this country, what people have fought for in this country. The, I think there needs to be a sense of pride to, to be Canadian. Um, I was speaking to uh, my American uh, an American friend of mine the other day, and I was telling her all about um, Toronto, where I'm from, and she was just amazed. She she was so amazed. She's like, I've seen things in Toronto on YouTube, and I am just amazed. About about Toronto, she's like, she was asking questions and she was so amazed. She's like, oh my gosh, um, uh, we're like, she's like, oh how amazing! And I was like, I told her where I lived, and she's like, I had a feeling you lived down there. And she was just so amazed at me being <laughs> um, from Toronto. And I think when, when you're from a place, the luster of that place just goes. And I think, um, but when other people hear where you're from, they're like, oh my gosh, it's so awesome. And I think um, we just need to be 
um, proud of where we're from. We need to be proud of our background, yes, and our parents, where we're from, our lineage, yes. We need to be proud of all of that and their culture. But we also need to be proud of where we stand now, where we are now. And I think I I am just... I'm just very proud to be Canadian. Um, We have our issues in this country. Yes, we do. We have our problems in this country. Yes, we do. We have our crime in this country. Yes, we do. But I'm so proud of the tolerance of wherever background you're from, wherever, whatever you're from, you can come here and feel accepted. Is there racism here? Definitely. Is there sexism here? Definitely. Is there homophobia here? Definitely. But but the feeling that you get when you step on the street, you can feel accepted. You can feel loved. And I'm saying not everywhere, but most places that I've been in Canada, they're very... Um, loving and very warm and very friendly and I'm proud to be Canadian. I'm proud to be part of a country that is so loving and warm and welcoming to everyone. And yes, we do have our issues, but overall we're a loving nation. We're a very peaceful nation. We We are the first to bring acceptance to people, one of the first nations to help people out if they're in trouble. And I'm very proud to be uh, Canadian. And I was thinking of just um, going back to the Rainbow Connection. as well as our connection with our culture and our, and as well as our connection with God and our culture and God's original intention, intention to connect us to ourselves, um, I think that there is the connection that we have to have with ourselves. I think a lot of the the key about um, um, about the Rainbow Connection is um, our our connection to ourselves. But to really connect to ourselves, we've got to connect to God. We've got to connect to the one who's made us. Um, And I think we were all born with, um, with the ability to be connected to God. And I think we're all born with this need to be connected to someone higher than ourselves. And then once we're connected to God, then we can connect to ourselves. A lot of people, the reason why they're so lost and feel disconnected is they're disconnected um, to themselves. Like, they don't know themselves, so they look for external validation because they don't have the connection to themselves to know that they're okay. And that connection to yourselves, to know what you like, to know what you don't like, to know who you are. Once you have that connection to yourself, that self-connection, no one can tell you who you are and who you're not. And... Um, like, it's just 
amazing to actually be connected to yourself, to know what your triggers are, to know who you are, to know it's so amazing. And I think once you get that initial rainbow connection to God, um, to, to, to um, your creator, to the Lord Jesus Christ, he'll connect you to yourself because uh, he will teach you about yourself. The, the greatest way to get to know who you are is to get to know God because when you get to know God, he'll unravel your layers, he'll teach you about yourself and you'll get more confident. I've had the experience where I'm only confident in myself because he's taught me, well, this is what drives you crazy. This is what triggers you. And here's why. And he guides me through that process. And and he, he tells me when I need to sit in pain, And when I need to push through pain, when I need to talk to a person, and when I need to talk to him. And that's all about having a relationship with God and having, and in turn, having a relationship with myself. I'm going to say you, I'm going to say something kind of controversial. You cannot have a real relationship with yourself, like a full-on relationship with yourself without having a relationship with God. You, You can kind of know yourself, but to fully know yourself, you've got to fully know God because he's the one that created you. And he's the one who know, who knows all your mechanisms and how they they work. And he'll tell you it's time to talk to that person or it's time to go to therapy, and you'll get a sense of it, and your life will be richer in that in that connection with yourself will be richer if you have a relationship with God. You can have a connection with yourself without a relationship with God, but but I would argue to to experience the full manifestation of yourself and to fully know yourself. You've got to know um, the one who created you, the one who formed and fashion you and knows all your personality, all your triggers, all your good parts, all everything that makes you tick, and he can teach you about all of that. And I'm not talking about a religion. I'm talking about a relationship, a walking, talking, living, breathing relationship. And he want so desperately for you to have that connection with him and that connection with yourself. He wants you to know your own triggers. He wants you to know how you work. He wants you to know when you're feeling sad. He wants you to know um, when to plug into your emotions and when to sit in your emotions and when to uh, push through although you have that emotions. And he will teach you how to work them out. And he will guide you to the right people, to the right friends, to the right, oh my gosh, he will just guide you and your life will be so, it won't be easier, but it you'll have a guide for when things get hard. When things get rough, 
he'll have somewhere to run. And it's just going to be a richer uh, connection with yourself and with others too. He won't only help you with yourself, but he will help you with your relationship with others. Um, could it be the reason why you have so much issues with other people is that you don't have a relationship with yourself? And because if you don't have a relationship with yourself, because you don't have a relationship with the one who created you. And um, a lot of church people, their relationship with God is very superficial. It's very, like, they sing three songs on a Sunday or they listen to a sermon, but they don't let God invade their lives. And they're too afraid to let God go to those dark uh, places that we don't want anyone see. They're too afraid to let God attack the loneliness. And that's attack the anger, attack the frustration, whatever it is going on. And he'll help you attack all that. And he'll put people in your way uh, when you need them. And he'll put the right people in your way. But you have to have um, that connection with him and with yourself. And I'm not saying a connection with God is so much deeper than singing three worship songs on a Sunday. A connection is like a living, breathing, active relationship with God. Um, a, a lot of Christians are very passive in their relationship with God. Like, they may wake up and read their Bible or watch a sermon, but um, their relationship with God is very passive. Um, but, he, like, very whatever. But but the Lord wants you... wants to speak to you when you're walking down the street. The Lord wants you to ask questions in the middle of your of your day on a Tuesday when you don't know what to do, you know, when your kids are going crazy. Not not even with that, like with like your daily your daily questions at your work like Lord, how do I deal with this um, difficult co-worker? Or how do I, you know, how do I do this? How do I do that? And that's what a living, breathing, active relationship feels like. Um, when I think of active, I think of activity. When I think of activity, I think of movement. Um, the Lord wants your relationship with him to be moving, to be progressing, to be full of life. And it is so amazing when you have a relationship that is moving and progressing and full of life. Nobody wants to be in friendship or in a marriage or in any kind of relationship that is not moving, that is staying stagnant. And too many people have a very stagnant, um, I'll ask you for help when I need it, but otherwise stay out of my life kind of thing. But the Lord doesn't want that relationship. He wants to be with you on on Monday, Tuesday, and he is with you all the time, but he wants to be active with you Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. He just doesn't want to be a passive thing that you just pick up when you're in trouble already. He wants to be that active participant 
in your life. He wants he wants your relationship to be moving, to be progressive. And it's just an amazing thing to, to think about. Um, he wants your connection to be living, breathing, and full of movement and full of life. We've, we've put God in this churchy box. And he wants to be totally out of the box. He wants you to understand that there is no box when it comes to God. That he just wants to be a part of your life, a part of your world, a part of your decision. He, he wants to be living, breathing, active. He wants to speak to you about every aspect of your life. He wants to know what concerns you, what gives you joy. He wants to be a part of the movies you watch. He wants to be part of the books you read. He wants to reveal himself when you're, you know, in conversation with a friend. He wants to reveal your to um reveal himself when your parents are going through illness. He wants to tell you how to deal with stuff. He wants to be a part of your life. Not just somebody you pray to when you need help or, oh Lord, help me through the day. He wants to be active and living in your life. Oh my gosh. I feel this so strongly in your, in my spirit today. He wants to be active and living and breathing and and just full of activity. He wants your relationship to be moving and progressing and stuff. He wants you to be the living word in your life. He wants every person you meet to get the word of God from your mouth, not because you have a Bible in front of you, but because you have a living, breathing, active relationship. He wants that connection with you. And when you have that connection with you, with him, you have that connection with yourself. And a lot of people are so disconnected from themselves, from themselves. They don't know why they're acting this way. They don't know why they're dealing with things that way. They don't know why they're angry. They don't know why, you know, where these issues are coming from. I argue that's because they don't have that connection with themselves. They don't know what triggers them. They spend, they spend, um, um, Lots of money in therapy, nothing against therapy. I'm all for therapy. I've been in therapy uh, on and off for years. Um, But before you go to therapists, you need a connection with the Holy Spirit. Even while you're in therapy, the Holy Spirit can speak to you. Not only through the therapist, but he he will add on to what the therapist will say. And he'll say, lean in. Your therapist is about to say something life-changing. And he will guide and direct your conversation with your therapist. And he'll be in the room. And your healing process... Oh, it it will be wonderful. And he'll let you know what to say to your therapist and how to explain things. You know, I know for me sometimes, most times, I have a really hard time explaining emotions. And there's been several times where, where he's just said things. One, one day... 
one time the other day, I was, um, I was in a Zoom meeting, and something popped out of my mouth, and I was like, where did that come from? And I, I found myself saying something. So I found, and I really felt a spiritual nudge to do this thing. So I asked the question. So I ended up signing up for something that was totally spirit-led. And that's because I have a living, breathing, active relationship with, with, with myself. Because I have a living, breathing, active relationship with Jesus Christ. Does that mean I don't make mistakes? No. Does that mean I don't ever screw up? No. It means that when I do, I can go to God and say, what happened here? And he'll tell me what happened here. And... In my relationship with other people in my daily life, I I can really find out how to communicate with them and how to talk with them and how to um, uh, be in right relationship with them. It makes my life richer. The Lord doesn't want you to get saved to just go to heaven when you die. The Lord wants you to get saved because he wants a richer, he wants a rich, active, living relationship with you. He wants to tell you things about yourself that you had no idea about. He wants you to tell you things about people which will make it easier to deal with them. He wants to be active and living in your life and just so amazing in every way. Father, I thank you for what you've done. And I thank you for this sermon and explaining what the other rainbow connection is. And I thank you, Lord, for talking about ourselves and where we're from and how to be proud of our backgrounds, yes, but also how to be proud of where we are now and how to be in connection with ourselves by being in connection with you. Thank you, Lord, for what you taught us. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to me and speaking through me. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen and amen. Okay, guys, I'll see you later. Take care. Bye. I'm going to sing The Rainbow Connection. For those of you who haven't heard, I would usually play it, but now I can't play it because of uh, YouTube restrictions. It goes. Oh my God, there are so many songs about rainbows. And what song the other side? Rainbows are visions and sometimes illusions. Rainbows have nothing to hide. So we've been told and some choose to believe it. But I know they're wrong way and see. Someday we'll find it, the rainbow connection, the lovers and dreamers and me.
who said that every wish would be heard and answered when wished on the moon new star somebody thought of it and someone believed it look what it's done so far What's so amazing that keeps the stargazing? There's some, there's something that I'm supposed to be. Someday we'll find it, the rainbow connection, the lovers, the dreamers, and me. All of us under its spell, we know that it's probably magic. The lovers, the dreamers, and me. Hi guys, sorry, I forgot the last verse. Um, So that was part of the song. Um, Oh, and the Holy Spirit's telling me to tell you the story of how this was written. I'm so sorry, I should have done that at the beginning, but... (laughs) I didn't. I I was listening to this song off and on for the past few weeks. It was a really strong thing in my spirit, and I didn't know why. But as I was listening to it, I love song stories. So as I was listening to it, I saw this YouTube video of one of the writers, um, of the Rainbow Connection, and he was talking about the writing of it, and he said that it started with writing songs for the for the Muppet movie in in the, in the I think it was the, the early or late eighties, um, and then he pulled in this other writer and then when he wrote the song for the movie and he started to to sing it um it just didn't didn't work but when kermit sang it something came alive and it it just it just um became a song that everybody sang and he he was saying when he went um uh somewhere in the world where they didn't speak speak english one of the songs um they were singing was the rainbow connection and he said it came from it came from um, the idea for the Rainbow Connection came from actually a, a, another song called When You Wish Upon a Star uh, when Jimmy Cricket was was singing. When you wish upon a star makes no difference who you are. And um, and they were like, um, it was like something about um, Kermit and wondering who he was and what that rainbow connection was and the, and the fact that um, Kermit was sitting in the swamp and wondering who he was and, and just that whole thing about who am I, God? Who's am I? 
And that's why I was talking about the, the connection with ourselves and the connection uh, with others and the connection about who we are as a people, um, the connection to our background, yes, but where we are now and to be proud of wherever we sit now and to be proud of who we who who we are, not just who our parents are or where or where our background is from. Yes, be proud of that. But be proud of where you are now. You made it through a lot. Whoever you are, we've all been through a lot. And you made it. You're here. And I just want to say, be proud that you are here. Be proud of who you are. And be proud of who you of who you will be. Be proud because you are here. You don't need to be from somewhere great to have a great cultural story to be um, to be um, to be proud. Just be proud of who you are now. Where you sit is amazing. Whatever you've been through, whatever you've come through is amazing. Be proud of that. Be proud of the fact that you're Canadian. Be proud of the fact that you're, you know, from a small town. Whatever background you are from, be proud of that. Because you know why that's a sense of pride? Because that's who you are. Be proud of yourself from making it through what you've, what you've been through. We often try to minimize what we've been through thinking that's nothing, but that's a lot. That's your connection, that's your story. Stop running from it thinking you need something greater. You don't need something greater, you just need to be proud of you. You just need to be proud of who you are who God has made you to be. And you don't need some big story to be great. You don't need to have some big movie or big play to be great. You're great because of not all that. You're great because you're you. You're great because you're you. You're great because you're you. And that is the ultimate connection your connection with you and celebrating your greatness and celebrating who you are, where you come from, where you hail from, and to know that what whoever you are, you're great. You're great. You don't need to be from some big place. You don't need to, to do some big thing. You don't need to um, preach the world. You don't need to have plays of the world to be great. You're great because you're you. And everything else is just gravy on top of the cake. You're great because you're you. Everybody say that with me. I'm great because I'm me. I'm great because I'm me. I'm great because I'm me. And that's what the Lord wants to say to his people today. You're great because you're you. And a lot of people are trying to find out themselves and to find out who they are doing all this. And and we as the people who are big, uh, who have like these amazing, fantastic cultures. But what they don't realize is having a big, great, fantastic culture is great. 
but you're great because you're you. Where you come from is great because you come from there and you're great and God made you and your greatness. So sit in that greatness and be proud of your greatness. Be proud of who you are. Be proud of where you sit. Be proud of where you come from. And everything else that happens to you, whether you have the great play, whether you have the great uh, movie, whether you have the great job, everything else is gravy on top of the, the cake. But first, you're great because you're you. Where you come from is great because you're you. You don't need this fa- these these fantastic stories to be great. You're great because you're you. And that's what the Lord wants to say. The other rainbow connection is the fact that you're great because you're you. No matter where you are, where you come from, you're great because you're you. Thank you, Lord. Have you been half asleep? And have you heard voices? I've heard them calling my name. Is this the sweet sound that calls the young sailor? That voice might be one and the same. I've heard it too many times to ignore it. And so that I'm supposed to be. No. It's something. Okay. It's, it's something that I'm supposed to be. Someday we'll find it. The rainbow connection. The lovers and trees and me. Um, you know, that last voice that he's talking about is not a voice of uh, mental deficiency or anything like that. It's the voice of God. It's a voice that's telling you who he's creating you to be. He's telling you that you're enough. He's telling you that who you are, where you come from, is enough. And that's the rainbow connection. The rainbow connection is really the connection with God and the connection. When you're connected with God, you're connected with yourself. And then when you're connected with yourself, you're connected with your culture, your background, who you are now. And that goes full circle from what I first talked about was being uh, Caribbean, um, from my background being um Caribbean and me being Canadian and me being proud of it, it comes full circle. It's just because I know who I, whose I am that I can celebrate all facets of my Jamaican, Catitian, K- 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 and Canadian heritage and celebrate all that's beautiful about those things and learn from what needs to be worked on about those, about that culture. 
a lot of people are ashamed of their cultures because there's a lot of things that need to be worked on about about those cultures, but don't be ashamed of it. Learn from it. You come from that culture because not to be ashamed of it, but to learn how to do better, how to walk better, how to talk better, how to, when I say talk better, I mean how to, how to learn from better, how to, how to learn from it, how to grow from it, grow through it. Don't be ashamed of those cultures. Learn from them, grow through them, and understand that you're there to make that family better. Some of us come from horrific family backgrounds, backgrounds of abuse and um, manipulation and all kinds of horrific things. And you're there not to run from where you're from, but to make it better and to make it more productive because it will, it will start with you. Um, I think it was Gandhi that said, uh, be the change you want to see. It's either, um, Gandhi or the Dalai Lama, I forget who said that, but be the change you want to see. Don't run from it, learn from it and do better, do better. Oh, that second verse is, who do we think we might see? What's so amazing that keeps us stargazing? And what do we think we might see? That's what it is. Sorry, guys. See you next week. Bye.